This is Providence from Providence Life Design. Um, sorry for the echo. The space isn't, doesn't matter. It's none of your business. <laughs> but I'm doing this video because I have some damaged shoes. You're like, what does interior design have to do with damaged shoes? Everything to do with damaged shoes. So um, I had to put, I posted something on Instagram about, you know, um, floors not being grouted and, and all of that. So this whole video is gonna be about grout, right? Because clearly no one deems it that important when you're in certain spaces. Now, I'm thinking because I want to make sure that I word this correctly. And I don't want to say this, this is one particular place, town, country, whatever. Um, because it, it's a problem that I see globally and I think that with the constant evolution of building materials and products and surfaces and things like that to use inside of the home, um, I think that there needs to also be instruction in how to use those items and not just put on the market. Because now you, A, you don't care about the consumer, B, you actually prevent um, the right consumer from purchasing the items that you sell um, and C, you can be selling something dangerous to someone and not realize that you're selling something dangerous to them or it doesn't apply to them. So like, like there's a, there's a product that's sold on the market. I've seen it in South America. I've never seen it in America, but I've seen it outside of America. And that's like linoleum. It's, it's like linoleum, right? It's a little bit, it's a more simplified version of what was considered linoleum um, in America and was heavily used like back in the 80s and 70s. It was a building material that came on a roll. Um, it gave off a high VOC. I don't even know why they even allowed it. It probably caused birth defects in people, but <laughs> but I know it was a commonly used um, building material and it was used commonly by carpenters to like put, you know, to do kitchens, right? Ideally, it's a great product if you're putting in like a secondary kitchen that doesn't have like high usage on above the ground level. So if it's a wood frame house, it is an ideal product to use up there in regards to weights and things like that. But there is a simplified version of it outside of America. It comes on spools that are about seven or eight, seven or eight feet in, in length and yeah, in width, right? And um, in developing, these were developing countries, it's something that um, can be easily used to like cover a rough floor or to cover a, a floor that needs repair or to be a temporary fix, right? Um, but when it comes to floors and, you know, it probably needs to be a, like a more focus on speaking about tiles and the type of tiles, but this is not an FFV uh, workshop. So I won't go into the into the details of defining tile. Now, you probably could find a video where I do do that, and it is probably on my like my IGTV videos or on my um, YouTube videos from like a year and a half ago. Anyway, so I was in a commercial space that had the nerve to be the marketplace for high-end furniture, okay? What's considered high-end furniture in that place that I was at. They had a 30, 36 inch rectified porcelain tile. When I say rectified, I mean that it didn't have pressed edges. It had a sharp 90 degree edges. It was a good quality tile, right? For their benefit, which is great. Um, and it was put on both the 
top floor. It's a, it was a two-story building, so it was on both stories of the building. I was beyond surprised when I'm like walking around. I'm like, oh God, you know, I need to look for this. I'm looking for that. And I got distracted by my space. Now, I don't like getting distracted by my spaces. I don't like that. I, I remember going to have dinner at a restaurant in, uh, where was I, in Accra, at a place called uh, El Padrino. And it's not a plug, you know, it's not Ghanaian own, but man, is this space like properly appointed. And I mean from the furnishings, wall carvings, floors, bar, everything, counter, everything was like fantastically like specified. I just enjoyed being in that space. That's exactly what interior design is. Do I enjoy being in my space? Does it serve me? Is it conducive to how it is I want to use it? Can I clean it without an issue? Blah, 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 blah. So now I'm in a space where they're selling high-end furniture and you're telling me that I am walking on floor tiles that have not been grouted. I was taken aback because that means that the only cleaning you can do long term for that space maybe is like a damp mop or a dry mop or something and you're like kind of like trying to buff it out. Could you could you imagine what the crevices are listen, people, you need to use grout. Okay? You need to use grout. Grout is important. Consider grout like your helper when you're using tile product and for the different applications of tile. Whether you're using it on the floor, the wall, inside of cooking spaces, bathing spaces, spaces that are constantly being exposed by water, pools, courtyards, right? Grout is important and it serves a variety of purposes. Okay, one great purpose that it serves, especially for interiors, and it lends to the beauty of a particular type of product and tile, and that is porcelain plank. Nothing worse. This is what I don't like about, like, in America. I can't stand when I see it. And I've seen it outside of America, but outside of America, you're like, ah, you know, <laughs> who's really doing specification, you know whatever but in america where we have uh you know where the product is sold hand in hand with the materials and the chemicals and all of that and you know every part of the united states has its own distributor and everything it just blows my mind when people use porcelain plank or ceramic plank in commercial spaces and they and they use it as if it is a squared tile product and not as if they're installing plank. There is rules to things, people. You know, I did a specification for a house in the Bahamas. I think I had many posts about it because it, it was a pretty large project. And one thing that was really important and what made the, prod, the project stand out was when the laborers followed I gave I gave consultation, so I was paid for consultation for the work, okay? And the laborers followed the instruction of the homeowner. Now, granted, the homeowner is a pretty handy person, individual. He could probably build things out of nothing, you know. So persons that have an interest in the crafts and in the arts of home building and furniture building, they may be a bit more persnickety than the ordinary person that just thinks that they can kind of like DIY, they work somewhere during the daytime, they got a third job and they're like, oh, let me just DIY my situation. But when you are hiring architects, contractors, all of this kind of stuff, it's like you need to consider what do I want my finished product to look like? And the thing that really took it to a whole nother level was when his laborers actually listened to the advice that was given on the installation of the plank. It took it to a whole nother level. I have ran into, when I used to sell building materials, I remember, you know, telling um, customers that seemed very, they, they were totally opposed to porcelain plank. They're like, oh no, no, I don't want anything to do with it. I said, okay, because you've seen it like in a restaurant, right? And it looked terrible. And they said, yes, it's always that right? It's always a darn Applebee's or one of these people. I said so, right? Where they just kind of, maybe because it's franchised, who knows? 
but there just does not seem to be any cohesiveness when it comes to kind of like putting in the finishes, doing the FFE for commercial spaces like that. So now when an ordinary homeowner who is thinking about doing a renovation for their home or they're doing a brand new build, they automatically assume like, ah, this building product is not for me. But it's the application that causes them to think that way. So grout, which is... It comes in three forms, guys. It comes uh, that I'm aware of. Grout, it comes sanded, unsanded, and it comes in a hybrid form. So far, to my knowledge, there's only two companies that sell it in a hybrid form in the USA. One of them is MAPE. MAPE is a quite comprehensive company. If you're breaking ground outside of America and you have taken the time to actually get proper specification and calculations, for the construction that you have intended to do, I highly recommend that you use the product. I'm not selling it yet, okay? <laughs> but it's a product that I have used and it hasn't disappointed me. Um, so I wanna say that, you know, grout aside from protecting your interior walls and the integrity of your interior walls, especially for water closets and things like that, showers, i.e. whatever, it's really, really important that you take the time aside from the type of grout that you need to use, also the color of the grout, okay? So sanded grout is ideally for a tile that has wide, um, wide setting gaps and then the, this unsanded is for when the, the gaps are a bit more narrow or for wall application hybrid is, hybrid is good for either. The only thing with hybrid is it's not a good idea for tilers that are really slow with their cleanup process, okay? Sanded grout, you can end up, you can unfortunately end up changing the color of what it's intended to look like if your mixture is not done correctly. So please follow instructions that are on packages and things like that. Grout protects back aboard. If you are putting up a wood frame home, it's you know you're doing a, a renovation, a construction that is in the, in the East Coast or something like that, and you know it's a wood frame house, and you're using backup board for your shower installations. Make sure you're using shower pan, guys. I'm not gonna do another video about that, but you know once you do that, the grout is what protects the integrity of the work that is done behind the tiling right grout is so important grout is what protects whatever the foundation is and the adhesion of tile that is put on the ground whether it's small format or it is large format okay so this video the only thing this video is about is grout get yourself some get yourself some if you are and you know um I don't even want to say architect because it seems like a lot of it seems like, you know, people are building houses outside of America with just the help of a draftsman and they're not actually looking in. They're not they're not keeping an, an, an architect on retainer. But if you are the homeowner and you have a draftsman, um, you know, doing the 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 build out, not the build out, excuse me, the drawings for the home that you plan on building, make sure you get a comp, a, a competent competent contractor that understands the importance of all these building materials. You want to make sure that you have seen examples of this person's work so you can be able to make the judgment if they should lead the project that you have in mind for your own home. All right, so I'm going to try my best to post this video on Instagram because God knows everybody needs it and I got tons of lurkers and I'm just hoping that they're just taking some of the advice. And I'm going to stop doing so many, so much FFE uh, related videos and just really try to focus more like on decor and things like that. You know, <laughs> you know, the stuff I can do in my sleep, you know, I would just, but you know, your home is so important. You got to love your home even more than I do, guys. Oh. Make sure you're following me on Instagram if you're not. Providence Life Design. And, uh, and share this video to those that you think uh, will benefit from the content. This is Providence from Providence Life Design. Stay blessed.